find yourself a nice, comfortable seat. And we'll begin our practice as always just by focusing on our breathing. Just notice your breath. Notice how it feels in your body. Notice if you're tight anywhere. Just be, don't change anything, just notice. Again, I am Riffwing Designs, of Riffwing Designs, and this is gonna be a Designs for Fitness. So we are gonna go a little faster than our Designs for Zen Yoga. You can find all of my videos on YouTube and lots of tutorials as well. So this will be a bit of a tutorial one on the warrior sequence. I'll walk you through the three warrior poses and we'll talk a little bit about adjustments for each one. I practice what I call Bob Ross style yoga, where you do what works for you. I can't see you, you can see me, but you are not me. So do not try to do everything that looks exactly like me. No one is exactly the same. And because of that, you need to find what works for you. If you have to adjust, or maybe just take a break, do whatever it is that makes you comfortable. Now that you're comfortable with your breath, let's start to focus on it. There are lots of different ways to do breath. Today we're gonna to do a filling breath. So to start off, imagine that your lungs and your body are a vessel. So when you inhale, you're gonna fill, opening from the, the bottom of your diaphragm. So you're actually breathing and filling from the bottom up. Try not to move your shoulders too much, but just focus on inhaling, filling your belly, and the exhale, you're pushing it back out. So imagine that you're filling and emptying that vessel. Make each breath as deep as you need. And if it works the other way, if you see it as filling from the top down, go ahead and reversing it. And whichever way you see the air entering and exiting your body. Maybe put your hands in your diaphragm and notice how the belly helps on the inhale, expanding and drawing in air. On the exhale, kind of falling back on itself. Your body is an amazing work and everything works together. When you exhale, it actually moves your heart up and on the inhale, it pulls it down. So you're actually moving your full body just by sitting here. As we're breathing deeply, start to think about what you want to set for your intention today. What is it that speaks to you? Think about if you want to focus on something. For me, finding strength and balance. For you, maybe something else. Or you can dedicate this practice to yourself or someone else. Something that you can come back to as an anchor throughout your practice. Something to focus on that'll help you to grow as we go through the next 50 minutes. Now, as always, you can continue to do anything or you can stop doing anything whenever you like. But if you're with me, come back to a normal breath. Just notice if that has changed and brought a sense of calm, focus, now that you're here on the mat. And we're going to set our intention. So we're going to do that by inhaling arms up. Exhale, sweep them wide and down one time. And then inhale up again. Bring your hands together. Pull your palms down to your heart. And you can keep your eyes open or closed, whatever works for you. We seal our intention with two breaths. First one just to cleanse. A big breath in. Let it out. And then a really big breath in and let everything go. Welcome to your yoga practice. We're going to do a lot of stretching to get into this. So we're going to be using our arms and our legs a lot. So to start off with, we're going to do our shoulder rolls, bringing our shoulders up, back, forward, and down, up, back, down, and forward. Again, whichever way works for you, I like to think of it as four square corners. So you're actually actively moving those shoulders up and back and down. 
But if something else works for you, again, do that. Notice your hands. Notice how they're moving of their own volition, just a part of the body. Again, it's all connected. Since this is Star Wars yoga, just like the Force isn't everything, your body is one piece of that big puzzle and everything, and it works together. And because we have balance in yoga, just like balance in the Force, we're going to go the other way, up, forward, down, and back at your own pace. Remember to breathe. Noticing where your sits bones are, how your body is connected to the earth. All these pieces that you focus on during yoga. Find stillness here. We're going to go to our neck next. So just let your head drop and do little micro movements, swinging it just a little bit back and forth, just a little bit. And as you inhale, you're gonna move your head to one side and start making those movements a little bigger. Inhale up, exhale, swinging down and up at your own pace until you go about halfway. Don't go all the way around. Just slowly increase the size of those neck circles. And if you notice there's a point that's really tight and you just want to stay there and kind of stretch it out, go right ahead. Again, this is your practice. Make it what you need. And wherever you are, if you're with me, I'm going to stay to one side here. And I'm going to try and get my ear to my shoulder without lifting my shoulder, just stretching in the neck. And again, you have an option here to take the hand on the side of the head and you can gently rest your hand on your head, just a little pressure, no pushing, just the weight of it. And you can take that other hand out and extend it and you might feel more stretch along the neck. Another tip that I like to share here is to use your nose and point like there's a string on the outside of your nose and just move your head with that nose to see if there's somewhere, ooh, it's just a little tighter and that angle will work for you. As you're here stretching out your neck, use your breath to breathe in that peace and relaxation. Maybe even coming back to those deep breaths. Finding what you need to stretch out your neck here. Maybe going to another position or maybe staying where you are. Be here for three more breaths. And gently, if your arms are up, bring them back down. Take your head, come back to center, and just notice how it feels. Before we move our head, bringing that ear to the other side, remember not to pull up your shoulder, just stretch, finding that angle. And once you do, maybe using that nose again to see if there's a position on this side that's a little more tighter. How does it feel? Is it somewhere different than the other side? Balance is not always equal. Each side can be different, just as every day can be different. And again, if you want here, you can put your hand gently on your head just to stretch a little more. Find what you need here. We think about balance. It's not just about trying to stand on one foot, which we will be doing today. It's also about noticing changes, because everything always will change. And that change can be for good or for bad. But whatever it is, being accepting and doing what you have the power to do is very important. Don't worry about things you can't control, but control the things that you can. All right, take your hands down, bring your head back to center. Do any other movements with your neck that you need. If you can do a full circle, you're available. You can do that now, but if not, remember, don't damage yourself. When you're doing yoga, you want no pain. No burning, tightness, severe <laughs> pain, any of that. And if you go in a circle one way, make sure again to find balance going the other direction. And then we'll work out our arms here and shoulders. Once you're nice and balanced, inhale, arms up. We're going to do twists, so exhale to one side. Inhale up, exhale, other side. Now, if you've done this with me before, you know I really like to hold them on, but if you just want to start warming up and going from side to side, go ahead. And if you want to be slow like me, I'm just going to anchor on one side. As you're here, focus on bringing up your spine. Inhale, lifting, exhale, twisting. 
and then to the other side. Breathing. Noticing again any differences. And then come back up. We're gonna do one forward if you're available. Now this is where your blocks start to come in handy. So for a forward fold, you can rest on the block if that's as far as you can go, or you can go all the way down. Keep those sit bones on the ground and just kind of breathe into it. And then walk yourself back up wherever you are. I'm gonna do our leg stretches next. So first off, extend one leg out. And fold over that leg. Breathing here. Keep your torso twisted so it's straighter onto the leg. And if you want, you can bend your neck, uh, bend your spine. You've got the block again. You can always use that to help you out as well. If you are really flexible, you can put it behind your foot to do even more. I am not, but this is something that if you're super bendy, you can put the block there. Again, I've got a whole session on block aids yoga on my YouTube. Please, please, please check it out if you have not. And if you have, it's been a couple of years, you might as well watch it again, right? <laughs> a little self promo. All right, now we're gonna go switch to the other side. So just switch them on over. And then when you're ready, twist that torso so it faces the leg before bending and find your forward fold here. Let that neck go. Remember to breathe. We're gonna be using our legs a lot today, so we're gonna take a nice long stretch to start. And then wherever you are, come back to center. We're gonna do a straddle. If you like to do a forward fold with your feet together, feel free. We're just gonna fold over here. You don't really wanna use your hands as leverage. You just wanna use the weight of your body and your spine. And again, you can use that block and put it underneath your head. Whatever works for you. Let that neck go too. I'll tell you, I already feel tight, so you gotta do what works for you. Slowly walk your way back up. We're going to do deer next. So bend both knees in the same direction and pull your feet in. So you make a nice little triangle with both legs. This is what it looks like. Like that. And you just sit there. So notice where your sits bones are on the ground. And then turn your torso towards the outer leg. Sitting up straight here. And then we're gonna do a couple little mermaid or dolphin poses where you're leaning up and in. It's a cat cow, but it's an active cat cow over your legs. If this doesn't work for you, feel free to do your normal seated cat cows or you can do them on your hands and knees. Notice how your back hip is gonna come up naturally. Again, that connection between the whole body here. And then start to expand it, do some like circles and just have fun with this movement. Maybe move your arms, go both directions. Feel how all of your hips and joints are starting to warm up here and do what works for you. Uh, something really fun you can do is as you're going forward, you can lift your hips and do a little side stretch. Again, it doesn't have to look like me. You wanna do something that feels good to you. You can do it both ways. One's gonna feel a little weirder than the other. You can do forward folds, lean back, shift from side to side, just warm yourself up. And if this back knee feels too tight, feel free to extend it, just like we were doing those stretches before. The only difference is we bent the knee. And then come to stillness. Notice how it feels. Remember which way your feet are going, we're gonna to switch to the other side. So I've always told you this and I still don't know how, but there's a cool break dancey way of like getting up and flipping over. Uh, that looks amazing. I don't know how to do that, so I just switch sides. <laughs> but if you can do it, have fun with it. This is all about enjoying yourself, not about looking good in front of someone else. All right, so now we're gonna start by rotating our chest this way and doing those dolphins or mermaids, the cat cows on this knee. Stretching our hips. Notice, for me, this sit bone that's on the front here is much tighter than the other one. 
So again, seeing that balance, the differences on each side. All right, and then again, start to introduce bigger circles, more movement, just playing around with how your body feels. In deer pose, breathing, finding what works for you. And we'll do just a few more movements here. And then come to stillness. Step nice and tall. And from here, we're gonna go right into our hands and knees. We're just gonna do your normal cat cows here. So for those, you're moving your chest forward. Exhale, pull your chest in, raise your back. Inhale forward, exhale, pull it in. You can also focus on your tailbone here. Whichever one works for you to shift and move. And notice how your hands are under your shoulders, your fingers should be putting weight even into the fingertips. And your feet, the backs of your feet should be pressing down evenly, balance. That should probably be my intention, just balance in all of the meanings. Okay, so now you can start to introduce movement in, you can put some circles into those hips, just like we did before. If you're with me and you know my favorite thing to do is to walk out into a little bit of a seal, just to get my spine extra warm. Maybe look over from side to side, whatever you need here. And then come to stillness. We're gonna reach one foot out and get into that like runner's lunge. We're gonna be using lunges a lot. So stretch out, planting your toes and pushing that heel back. Just breathe into it. Nothing special here. If you want, you can lift that front leg and go into a full lunge. Why not? <laughs> Wherever you are. We're just stretching out that back leg. And then maybe just stretch a little further back, just push it a little bit, then come forward, start to introduce movement into that ankle and that leg. And then one of the things I love to do is take my leg and extend it out in to the side. So we're going into a gate. I'm just gonna turn so you can see it here. It's a gate. And maybe here you just kind of move again, just stretching out a little bit of your groin and inner leg. We can go into a full gate, why not? Raise up your hips. That's a bigger gate. You can inhale and lean over the extended leg for a side stretch. And then come to center, nice and strong. Try to go the other way again. Here's where you can take your block to help you out. Nothing wrong with that. Find where your hand needs to be to get a good side stretch here. And you might even feel some stretch on that supporting leg, opening and bringing life into everything. Inhale, using your abs really strong here. Great. Now we're gonna take, and you're gonna take your leg back again, just to that lunge where we were at before. And maybe cross it over behind you and look the other way. So you're looking across doing a little bit of a spine twist. And pull it back, lift it up, give it a little bounce, and then bring it back down. And you're gonna notice that balance is off because you stretched one leg and not the other. So shake it out if you need to, and then we're gonna press the other leg back, getting into our lunge. Again, option here to lift that front leg if you want. Not a big deal if you don't want to, because you're stretching the back leg. This just gives you a little bit more across the whole leg and groin. Breathe into it. Maybe even make, let your neck go a little bit. And then maybe push back a little bit more, bringing some movement now into the ankle and the leg. And then come to stillness and sweep that leg out to the side, doing gate on the other side, first with your hands down. 
And you can stay here or you can lift up into full gait. Notice, press on the outside of the blade of your foot so it's touching the ground. And then we're gonna inhale, lean over, exhale, like this. Using your abs, lift up, T-pose, exhale, finding what you need for the other side. And then inhale up, exhale, coming back to all fours with the leg out. And then cross it over, looking the other direction. Good work. And now bring it back, pull it in, and shake it out. You've gotten both sides done, notice the difference. We're gonna go back in the child's pose, so knees wide, feet together, rest back onto it, lower your hands and head, and just breathe. Now comes the hard part, so prepare thyself. Now that we're nice and warm, we're gonna plant our hands, bring our feet out, kick into our first downward facing dog. Now for this, your feet don't have to be hip distance apart. My feet naturally like to be a little closer, but find where your feet wanna be. Notice how that stretching of the ankles here, your knees should be bent. The question is how much? Your heels do not have to touch the mat. You should try and push them down because it gives you a stretch, but by no means do they have to touch. You want more of a bend in your knees to bring health here. Your hands, make sure you're, again, you're pressing all of the fingers down. Elbows, um, when you're pressing down, you can twist your elbows so that they're facing in more. You really wanna make sure that they're pulled in. Shoulder blade should be pulled back. Head loose, maybe shake it yes and no. And again, if you need to pedal out your legs here, just get used to this dog. We're gonna be here a lot. If ever you need a break, you can sink back down into child's pose. You do not have to stay in any of these dogs. <laughs> All right, now that we've gotten stretched out in our first dog, let's inhale, raise up. I'm raising my right leg. Flex that foot, right? Then maybe bend your knee and shake out your hips, getting it a little warmer. And exhale, straighten it out, three-legged dog. Now we're gonna step our foot through by pulling our knee up to our chest. Look, at we're back in that lunge. <laughs> so this is the start of the warrior series. When we're here, look at your back foot. You're gonna rotate it so it's 45 degree angle and your heel is down. If you have your heel up, it's considered a crescent. Um, but when you're rotating from the lunge with your heel up to the first warrior, your foot will move and where it moves is up to you. So we've rotated our foot. We start to lift ourselves up. Now, I'm gonna go really slow through this. When you're, here we go. When you're in your warrior, there's no right way to do it if it feels right to you. So you've got the angle on your back foot, your heel should be down. You should have an angle in your knee, your knee should not go past your front foot just because it's not healthy for the joints, but if yours feels like you need that stretch, do it. But again, maybe talk to your doctor about that. <laughs> Everybody's different. You've got that big stretch that we've been working up towards here. Another thing you're gonna notice is your legs and your hips will face towards the front foot. When you rotate your hips forward, you feel a big stretch. And having that foot down with a bend in the knee will help. This one here as well. Let's play around with our feet. First thing you're gonna notice, front foot, and I'm just gonna hold the wall here. Like there's no shame in holding walls or chairs that are stable. This foot can be forward or really out. You can keep it close together, that's, that's fine. The more you step the foot out, the deeper your stretch will be. Keeping a bend and keeping that plant is the most important. The second part about this is when you're in your warrior, your feet can go wide. There's nothing wrong with a wide hip as long as your hips are facing forward. If you need for balance to be like this, do this. If you need to be on rails like this, ooh, my hips are not made for that, but some bones are. Find the width and the length. 
<laughs> that works for you so you don't fall. So you have weight on the front and the back of each foot. When you rotate your hips forward, it's not too tight and you have balance right in the center. Once you've found that, straighten up, roll your shoulders back, do mountain hands first, just like this. Chest back, breathe, pull the shoulder blades together, feel that balance. And then maybe move your torso forward and back, noticing as you bend your knees, shift from side to side, where the balance shifts. These are the things that you may not get normally in a yoga class because I just say go through warrior one, two, three. If you're ready, inhale arms up. Traditional warrior has arms up like this. You can do them as cactus arms. You can put your hands together and make a little gun, a little blaster, right? Um, you can bring them closer together. But one thing to notice, and I'm just gonna demonstrate here, when you have your arms up, your shoulders pull up. You wanna pull your shoulders back and down so you've got a gap between those shoulder pauldrons and your head. And it can be misbalanced, so sometimes having that mirror <laughs> will help. But where you are here, find that center with the shoulders back. If you ever need a break from the feet, you can just do it standing and practice those arms. So wherever you are in your warrior, just feel it a little bit more, play with those arms. And then we're gonna release. You're taking your hands back down. When you do this again, notice the back foot, it's moving. With your hands planted, now you can step back and you can go into your down dog or maybe just child's pose to rest for a second. We're gonna do the other side just to feel out our first warrior. So from here, plant hands into your dog. Inhale, left leg up. Pull your knee into your chest, step through. Here we are at our lunge already. Now on this side, same thing. Move your foot so that you've got that 45 degree angle outward from your heel, toes facing towards the outside of the mat. Inhale, lift up. Now already you should be noticing. Do your feet wanna be closer together? Do they wanna be wider? To keep weight on all four points, front and back of each foot. Just the feet, don't focus on the hands yet. And once you think you've found it, move your hips to see how it feels when your chest moves too. Maybe modify and see if you need something else here. And again, notice balance. So for me, my back ankle feels tighter. So I'm gonna have my feet a little closer. Now we take our arms into it. First mountain, shoulders back, pulling those shoulder blades together, breathing here, shining your chest forward, maybe even a little bend looking up. This is a fine warrior, okay? The next one, hands up, pull those shoulder blades down, breathing here. Another one, goddess arms, cactus arms, pull those shoulder blades back, or maybe you make your little blaster, Put the fingertips up. This pulls the shoulders together more, but you can still pull the shoulder blades back. Stay here in your warrior for a few breaths. Another option is the spaceship. This is more of the Naruto run, sci-fi looking kind of thing, but it looks cool and it pulls your chest forward, shoulders back. And now that we've done that, hands down planting, and then step. Notice the back foot's moving. <laughs> step back into your down dog or your child's pose. That's warrior one. Next we're gonna do warrior two. So inhale, right leg up, step through. You go into warrior one first, rotating back foot, hips facing forward, breathing. Warrior two, open up. So your hips have opened back, hands come out to the T pose. But what you're supposed to do is look over the front hand, front fingers. Shoulders should be back and down. 
Notice this again. Your hips, do your feet need to be wider? Do they need to be further apart? You're supposed to, supposed to have them a little close here, but what works for you? So maybe you want their hands on your hips. Notice the balance here. So this foot has been turned and it's facing out, and this one's facing forward. <laughs> it's funny, I'm a little breathless and all we're doing is breaking down the poses, but it's important. And the more you do here, by bringing this foot out, the deeper that stretch is gonna be. Maybe that feels good. Maybe this side it doesn't. <laughs> From here, just turn, look over the finger, breathe. Notice the stretch in your neck, shoulders, arms, feet. Weight on the outside blades of your feet just as much as the inside and the front and the back. That's warrior two. Now they call a next one is reverse warrior. So you lean back, you flip the front hand, and you're just stretching up. So they're stretched from the side. This side comes down, you can rest your hand on your leg or back. Look up if that feels good. That's your reverse warrior. And then go into warrior two. So this is a little baby flow. If you wanna work out, you can just do this for a little bit. But just get used to the feel of reversing. You're not moving your feet at all. You're planted, firmly anchored. And then come back to warrior two. From here to get back down, you rotate your back foot, twist your hips. Notice the guy have to move my stance to get back into warrior one. Heel down in the back. And then you plant your hands, step, or you can do your flow if you wanna do a flow, <laughs> back into warrior, uh, into down dog. Okay, now we gotta do the other side. Inhale, left leg up, step it through, warrior one. Breathing here, shoulders back, hips facing forward. And then you're gonna open it up into warrior two. All right, this time, look at this side. Your back foot, again, is turned. Should be a little bend in your knee. Hips are open. Notice if your feet have to be further apart, further out. Again, you wanna have a nice stretch. And bring your arms up. Notice that center. See, I'm doing like a little surfboard move here. Anything you need to help keep your shoulders down, arms out, finding balance. And then look over those front fingers. Notice a twist in your neck and arms. Breathe in here. Now that you found it on this side, we're going to go reverse warrior. So flipping the front arm, tipping back, not moving your legs. Breathe in here. Noticing if you like your hand on your leg or behind your back. I like the back because it forces my abs to do more work. Back to warrior two. And just practice flipping without using your legs. Now that you've found that stable balance. All right, warrior two. Twisting into warrior one, moving that foot. And then you plant your hands, step back, go through your flow, meet in child's pose or down dog. So we've done warrior one and warrior two, <laughs> and we've got one more to go. So for this one, we're gonna go through the same thing we started with because we're building up this warrior flow. So get into your down dog, right leg up, step it forward, warrior one. Hips forward, open into warrior two. Notice again, your feet and arms, hips especially. For warrior three, I'm gonna demonstrate first, so feel free to take a break. To get into warrior three, you rotate actually back to warrior one. And then you kind of step forward and you're putting weight in your front foot. Get your blocks. <laughs> and when you put your weight in your front foot with your hips again on those rails, you're lifting your back foot up like this. That's all you have to do. Now you can, you wanna keep those hips twisted and facing down. You can just go like this with your hands in your hips, hands in prayer, back like you're flying, Superman. There are lots of options for your arms, but at this point focus on your standing foot and you wanna micro bend in this leg. 
That means that you're not locking your knee. You're literally keeping a bend in it, which gives it more challenge, but it helps you to work out your leg more. All right, so we get our warrior two. Go back into warrior one. Ooh, find your balance. Put the weight into your front foot and then start to float your back foot up, finding your warrior three. Flex that back foot like we did earlier. It doesn't have to go high. It can be down. What feels good for you? We're working on balance here and breath. You can do one hand or two on the block. My balance is ridiculously bad today. And then to get out of it, you use your leg to push back into warrior one. So just kind of rock, keeping that root, just rock back and forth. Really strong in that standing leg. You've got this. Now look at, oh yeah. Okay. And then let's shake that leg out. Ooh, good job. Warrior three. Now we're back in our warrior one. You know how to get to down dog or child's pose. Go on ahead, step back. If you want to do your flow, do your flow. And we'll all meet back here. Take some breaths. And a big inhale, let it go. Other side, lifting left leg up, stepping through, warrior one. Hips forward, open up, warrior two. Then we do the normal flow back, forward, warrior two, shift back into warrior one. And then we're gonna play around with our first warrior on this side. So put the weight in your front foot and just practice floating that back foot up, anchoring with the front. When you're ready, you can start to play with your arms, you know, keeping them on your block, hips flying, back, prayer. You want your hips again to be facing towards the ground here, back foot flexed. And then again, just do a few together just to get used to it with your arms where you want. Now the one with the arms in the front is actually the most difficult because you're really extending your body long. Doesn't mean that it's the one for you. One more. And back down, shake that foot out, good job. Now, for the full warrior flow that most of the classes I've been to do, we need to add in one more pose. So, we're gonna, oh goodness gracious. We're gonna take it back down, so going into your warrior one. Plunge your hands to your flow if you want. Come back into your down dog. From here, inhale right leg up, step through. Warrior one, open to warrior two. Reverse warrior. Now come back to warrior two. Extended side angle. This leg is already out. What it is, is you're planting the front arm on it, sweeping your hand underneath, and coming into a side stretch. That's all it is. You can look down, you can look up, whatever feels good for your neck. This hand should not be holding weight she should be able to lift it and use a big, strong core to hold yourself up. Some people will even come down here. That's what I love to do. It may not work for everybody. You don't want to hold yourself. But since we have our blocks, you could try moving from here to here. Find what works for you. Extended side angle. So let's sweep back up and down. And do that a couple of times. Just get used to Rocking into extended side angle. Opening that chest. Whew. All right, back into side angle one more time. And then swing it back up. Warrior two, warrior one. Plant your hands, do your flow. Back to down dog. And we have to do the other side for balance. So left up, step through, warrior one. Warrior two, 
uh, reverse warrior. Extended side angle on this side. How does that feel? How is that different? Where is your balance? Sweep it back. Forward. Extended side angle. Now some classes may teach you to put your arm up here. You can do that too. I like to do the sweep because it feels better for my shoulder. <laughs> I'm not kidding, I got a bad shoulder. So some people will take you from, you don't have to do this, but from here to this without the sweep. You just keep your arm where it is. But that sweep really helps to warm my joints up. <laughs> Maybe it's my age. All right, so pull yourself back up to warrior two, warrior one, and your flow. Told you this is for fitness. All right, let's go to child's pose. So, as you can see, this can be a workout. You can do your warrior cycles, now that we've got that full rotation slowly for balance or even really fast for fitness. So we're gonna do two more cycles, one slow and then one fast. So that when you wanna do this on your own or if you have it in a class, you will be more comfortable with finding your own personal place for this. All right, get some water if you need it and let's do this. Tuck your heels, lift up, right leg up, Swing it through, warrior one, hold here. Find that balance, hips forward, shoulder blades back, heel down, <laughs> did you catch that? Mine was up, it's okay. Breathe, warrior one, or <laughs> warrior two. Breathing, finding that balance, shoulders down, reverse. Really holding strong with your legs here. And then back to warrior two. Extended side angle. Holding it here. Back to warrior two. Swing into warrior one. Plant your hands. Hold here for a breath. And then go through your flow. Couple breaths in your down dog. Other side, left leg up. Step it through, warrior one. Warrior two. Breathing here. Reverse warrior. Warrior two. Extended side angle. Warrior two. Warrior one. Plant your hands and hold. And then do your flow. So that was kind of slow. Let's do it fast. And again, you do not have to keep up, but let's have fun with it. Ready? Right leg up, through. Warrior one, warrior two. Reverse, extended side angle. Warrior two, warrior one. Oh, we forgot warrior three. Guess what we have to do? Warrior three. Again, you don't have to put this in every flow. Warrior one, hands down, other side. Leg up, step through. Warrior one, warrior two, reverse. Warrior two, extended angle. Warrior two, warrior one. Warrior three. Warrior one. And down, do your flow. We have to do one more. <laughs> so we forgot warrior three. We'll do it slower again. Right leg up, step it through. Warrior one. Warrior two. 
Reverse warrior. Warrior two. Extend side angle. Warrior two. Warrior one. Warrior three. Warrior one. Plant your hands and flow. All right, other side, left leg up, step it through. Warrior one. Warrior two. Reverse warrior. Warrior two. Extended side angle. Warrior two. Warrior one. Warrior three. Warrior one. Plant your hands and flow. And come on back to child's pose. <laughs> so, you don't have to do all of those poses, but that's a good flow to go back and forth. If you have anything else you want to do cardio wise or one more down dog, do that now. We're going to start to cool down. Ooh, grab that water if you need it. And just know that that's one option to get a little cardio and a little stretching at the same time. All right, so let's actually come to standing. Since we stretched out those legs, I want to do a wide-legged forward fold. One nice big stretch, so feet wide and just fold on and down. You can grab your elbows and just dangle. Let your neck and your arms go. Feel those legs and those hips. Keep breathing. Then inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. From here, let's use your hands or a block if you have it. We're gonna do side to side. So you go like this. These are the Mandalorian hero lunges. They look really cool. Just stretching out those legs. Uh, for added balance, you can have your hands at your chest and look really cool, but this takes a lot of work. Find what works for you. Ooh, I hear my ankles. All right. And then come to stillness again, forward fold. Maybe bring your feet in a little bit more. So you can use the block here, you can have your hands out. Or if you want hands behind this time to stretch out more. Looks like this. hard to show up wide fold. <laughs> all right, then we're gonna inhale. Use your core to lift up all the way. Hands together, we're gonna move our feet a little bit closer together going into yogi squat, exhale. You can stay here, you can sit on that block if you need it, just hold it. Maybe go back and forth a little bit, getting that last stretch into those legs. Good job, little legs. And then come to stillness. If you want from here, you can go into a crow. Or if you're with me, just settle on down and we'll come down onto our backs. Hug yourself and give yourself a nice big old hug. We are not doing boat pose today, everybody celebrate. Move your knees around, guiding small circles, releasing that hips in the back. Whew. And then when you're ready, come to stillness, one more big hug in. And then we're going to start doing our twists here. So exhale, one leg out. With the knee in, twist that ankle around. Give it a good old stretch. Pull it in. Maybe even pull your knee towards your underarm. Give yourself a nice big old stretch. And then take it on over, guiding with your hand. Find any of the twist that works for you. If you don't like doing this one, find your own twist. You can even, again, use your block. Put your knee on so it's not so intense. There we go, now you can see it. Like this. Breathe into it, keep those shoulder blades down. You don't have to twist all the way, you wanna twist 
with the shoulders down so you're getting all of your hips and spine. And then when you're ready, you can inhale up, hug it in one more time. We're gonna do an opener. So guiding the knee over, doing a little half butterfly or half frog here. If you like frog, you can flip on over and do a normal half frog. Just breathe into it. <laughs> Thank your legs for being so flexible today. And then pull it back in. One more hug and switch. This time I'm giving this ankle twist one way and the other. Pull your knee towards your underarm before guiding it into a twist on the other side. Keeping those shoulders down, finding your twist. And breathe into it. Noticing again balance with your breath and the difference from this twist on the other side. Three more breaths here. And when you're ready, fold and back towards center and then opening your hip, doing your frog on the other side. Just breathing into it again, finding if you need that block to help out, go right ahead. This is your practice. And then pull it back up, knee in, and then both knees in. We're gonna do two or three rounds of bridge here. So plant your feet with your heels close to your bottom. Plant your hands down, push your shoulder blades and feet down, and just gently lift your hips a little bit, just a little. And hold that, and pull your knees in. If you've got your block, again, one of the fun challenges, if put it between your legs and use that to help work those legs together. You wanna to twist the legs together to hold that strong core. And then exhale down. One breath, noticing again how it feels to be still. And then inhale, bigger bridge. Breathing here, pulling those legs together, pressing back with your shoulders, hands and feet. And then exhale, slowly let it down. If you'd like, you can do wheel for the third one or just go into one more bridge with me. Two breaths. And then if you're going into wheel, plant your hands, tuck your chin going in and out. And then wherever you are, lift into that last back bend. Breathe into it. For three, two, and one. Again, tuck your chin as you're coming back out of it. Finding stillness and just noticing how it is. And I'm going to go into our Savasana now. So if you have any other last movements that you would like to take, feel free. I'm gonna recommend doing legs up the wall for this Savasana, but if you wanna do a normal Savasana, feel free. For legs up the wall, you'll need an open area of wall. You scooch up to it on one side, and then you rotate and put your legs up the wall. And so for this, you really just want to keep your shoulders down. Your arms can be out or above on your belly. Your feet can be up. They can make a diamond. You can be wide. You can be close. The idea here is that you're resting and you're also allowing that blood flow to reverse. I mean, not literally. <laughs> and allow your heart to pump less and allow your legs to relax. So if you want to stay here for free, you can do it for a little bit and then switch to a normal savasana. Wherever you are, start to settle in. And I'm gonna guide you through this. So let your eyes flutter closed. Again, finding stillness. Noticing your breath again. Bringing calm to your breath. 
Maybe even visualizing that filling again, if that works for you. And begin to release any other areas that are tight. Your forehead, the area between your eyes, your jaw, maybe release your tongue from the top of your mouth. We'll release the shoulders, anything else in your back. And notice those hips, maybe even adjust a little bit just to find that nice calm. And maybe you need to roll your wrists to your ankles one more time. And for this Savasana, I'm gonna give you some silence. So you're gonna have two minutes of silence. And again, you can stay here as long as you need. And I welcome you to your Savasana. And again, you can stay here as long as you need. But if you're with me, start to deepen your breath. And maybe move your fingers and toes. And when you're able, start to shift out of that pose. First, just coming into whatever comfortable pose you can coming out of the wall. Maybe staying curled up on your side for a second. Wherever you are, you're going to come back to that seated position in a time and place that works for you. Just notice your breath and your eyes can be open or you can have a gentle gaze. We're going to set a new intention going forward. So if you want to keep the one you had, feel free. Or if there's something else that you'd like for the rest of your weekend and your day, feel free. We're going to again inhale, arms up. Exhale, sweep down, inhale up, hands come together, draw them to heart center. Think of that intention and we'll seal our practice today with a feeling of gratitude to yourself for being here and for continuing your yoga practice as I thank you for being here with me. So again, sealing our practice, one inhale in, let it go and your biggest inhale yet and let everything go. <sighs> Bring your thumbs to your forehead. With the love of the light and the Jedi in me, or the Mandalorian in me, thanks to love, light, and whatever hero is inside of you for this warrior practice. Namaste. And thank you again for being here. I am Riftwing Designs of Riftwing Designs. Find me as Riftwing Designs everywhere. Again, look at my YouTube channel. I have a coffee donation now, so you can always donate. And we are doing yoga at the end of every month, the last Saturday at noon Eastern. I have a open 
theme for cosplay next month. So if there is something you would like to see or there are some poses that you would like to do, feel free. We can focus on any of the poses from the simple to the difficult as you saw today. Even the warriors can be quite a workout. So thank you for being here so much. It's great to see all of you. And we'll pull ourselves up. So with that, again, thank you so much and we will see you next time.